Hey friends, it's Samira coming to you from my spare bedroom slash art studio. Um, so I've been thinking about ways that I can encourage you during this time while we all need encouragement. I'm pretty sure because yesterday I made my family breakfast and then I ended up crying over my eggs and kicking everyone out of the house. Probably wasn't my finest hour, but overall I got through it. So I've talked to a few of you and you've all said that it's like a roller coaster of emotions. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe we can come together and help each other in that. And if you're not experiencing a roller coaster of emotions, just go on with your steady self and just keep on keeping on. But if the state of your toilet paper can be stressful, I want to help you take the edge off. And what I can offer you is my creativity. So I'm going to record some doodles. I'm going to share some devotionals and I'll just go live in my little corner office of my spare bedroom studio in an attempt to hopefully give you something to think about, something not to think about, and some truth to focus on. Because right now we all need a whole lot of truth or even just one key component of truth to cling to, to focus on, because that is the thing that's going to get us through. So I hope you enjoy my little devotional that I have for you today. I'm going to be reading from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 8. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be made evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. When the sign behind my um, new art table studio in the spare bedroom, when I saw it leaning up against the wall, I was like, oh, the irony of it all as I'm trying to squeeze the most essential art supplies into my car and then into our spare room, which any artist will tell you, they're all essential. Even if you haven't used them in two years, they could become essential. So it's kind of a challenge. But anyway, as I was trying to get all of these supplies together, um, trying to think, what will I need? What can I do? What do I even have the capacity to create right now? Because as a creative, you know, the things that happen around me and the weights of the world or my circumstances actually end up sucking life from my creativity. And so if I I haven't created for a while, that's a problem. Or if I'm feeling heavy or burdened by something, that's a problem. And so in a way to jumpstart it, when my circumstances aren't gonna change or when things are not fixable, I just have to start creating. And a part of that step forward and a part of that motion to start creating is just to start focusing on something other than myself because if I focus on myself and my woes I just go nowhere fast actually I do go somewhere I just fall out of control and tumble down the hill and it's a hot mess and so especially in times like this where you know we might be feeling great you know, things are going well at home. You know, I've seen moms post stuff about all these magical things they're doing with their kids. And I'm like, man, like, I'm just trying to make sure no one kills anyone by the end of the day. And we all get along and we can get back to the table for dinner. So if you're like me and one of those moms, don't look at the moms that are, I don't know, doing m amazing things. I just want to tell you, you're doing amazing things too because you're keeping your family fed. So... And so you have to start thinking about real things. You have to start thinking about true things. And, and when you focus on good things, somehow they start to get better. Somehow 
the bad things kind of take the backseat and eventually they move to the trunk. And if we're, if we keep focusing on the good long enough and the truth long enough, it will eventually transform our perspective and kick the bad right out of the car. The reality is bad things are still going on. You know, the reality is people are still broken, hard things still happen, but what are we focusing on? And in Philippians, you know, we're told that we have to rejoice in the Lord always, first verse. I'm like reading this verses four through eight and I'm like, I need to actually just memorize these verses right now because it needs to be my mantra. So first of all, it starts off, rejoice always. So we don't even have to go very far right there to actually think, man, am I rejoicing always? Because I'm certainly not, um, confession, but I need to be rejoicing always because then I'm focusing on something good. I'm focusing on something that's worth focusing on as opposed to um, the fact that my child is hungry every 20 seconds and uh, I feel like a bad mom because I finally kicked him out of the kitchen. So rejoice in the Lord always. He tells us again. He's like, I'll say it again. Like, hello, rejoice. Let's do this thing. Let your gentleness be evident to all. In these times, I don't feel gentle. I don't think I'm naturally a gentle person. At least, I don't think that's the case. And I'm pretty sure everyone that knows me, including my husband, would say I'm not gentle. So, okay, are we being gentle? And if we are, and if we're not, we need to choose gentleness right now. And it needs to be evident. It can't just be something that I'm working on, but it has to be displayed. It has to be shown. It has to be lived out. And the Lord is near. He's not far. He's not running around. He hasn't turned his back on you. He hasn't turned his back on the world. That's not happened. He's never done that. He never will. He is near. We can't be anxious about anything. We can't be uptight and tense and, oh my gosh, but instead of taking all of those feelings that are natural, because we're human and that's, you know, our default setting is to be anxious, to try to control but we can't do that. We have to fight that. In every situation, we need to pray. We need to pray fervently with thanksgiving. So it's not just, oh, Lord, help me. Oh, I'm woe is me. And we have to thank him. Like, focus on the good. The good will get better. Let's thank him for what's going on. You know what? It's tough right now, but I have food in my house to feed my family for today or for tomorrow. Or you know what? Um, I live in Florida and my air conditioner is working and that's huge. And so I'm really thankful for that. Thank him. Thank him for who he is. He is a God of hope. He is a God of peace. And if you're not feeling those things, push into him and ask him show, to show himself in a new way and cling to the truth. Change your perspective and focus with thanksgiving and present your requests to God. And then, get this, he tells us, and then the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, which means it blows even the smartest person ever out there, out of the water in regard to their understanding of what's going on. That peace, the God of peace, will guard your heart and your mind. He will protect it in Christ Jesus. Is protected. Nothing can come against it. Your heart and your mind is safe with the peace of God because he transcends all understanding. And it finally, he says, whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about it. Think about those things. It's easy not to but we must choose to focus on the good. We must choose to water the good. We must choose to fan to flame the good things so that they become stronger and bigger. Sure, we're gonna struggle. Sure, we're gonna have down days and sure we're gonna cry over our eggs like I did yesterday because you know what? It's hard right now, but God is still near. He is still good and he's calling out to us because he wants to fill us with peace. He wants to transcend our understanding and be near. So we must choose to think about the good. We must choose to think about what's right, pure, admirable, praiseworthy. Even if you have to start off by making a stretch and being like, well, you know, there's nothing really good or admirable going on in my life, but I did eat today, so that's a start. And then what else? Um, 
on a live. And if you need to start as low as possible, the lowest things you can think of to start building up the things you focus on that are good, do it. Just list five things and I promise you by the end of your fifth one, you will feel better because that is how it works. When we focus on good things, good things grow. And it's not a magical situation or solution, but God calls us to focus on good. And when we do, good things will happen. I just want to encourage you with that because it's hard and it's frustrating and we don't understand all the time, but it's okay because God is still near. Remember, he is still near. And go back and read Philippians 4, verses 4 through 8, while I'm over here tattooing it on my forehead backwards so I can see it every time I look in the mirror. I know some of my friends are like, oh, I'm going to cut bangs because I'm out of control. And I just might start tattooing verses all over my body so I can remember. We'll see what happens when we get out of quarantine. Anyway, I hope you have a awesome day and you make it good and you make the nearness of God something that you can experience by focusing on good things. When you focus on the good, my friends, the good gets better. I'll talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this, please let me know. I would really appreciate some feedback by giving me a thumbs up, commenting, sharing, or sending me a personal message because what I'm doing here is for you and to encourage you. And so let me know if it's working or if you want to see something else come out of my studio or out of my hand that I can draw for you. Let me know. We're in this together and we're going to make it through. And um, let's seek to live fully during this time. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.